Bar. My responses to the criticism of my Bring a Trailer video. This is a topic that I could dedicate an entire YouTube channel to. And what I find really funny is that a lot, that there were at least two common threads here where people decided to say some things that, you know, I think questioned my intelligence and my observation with these topics. And so I think we're going to go with the more lighthearted comment first. Um, Somebody named Mark, Mark Burry 141 he says, I usually don't listen to a bearded liberal, but I wanted to see what you had to say. I think it's really funny that um, somebody would call me that, a bearded liberal. Most people who know me, even my friends who are liberals, know that that's not, not really my political persuasion, even though... You might mistake me for that because I try to treat my employees fairly and because I don't, you know, engage in ad hominem attacks against people that I do, that I disagree with. Uh, I just am not, not that at all. In fact, those of you who know me know that um, I am Catholic and I attend a Latin Mass, which puts me in the more traditionalistic camp of, you know, that religion. And uh, basically what, what I profess to be my belief system would be anathema to to uh to to being a liberal so you know although i can understand and agree with and process people's arguments for things which doesn't make me a liberal just makes me a kind person who doesn't sum people up based on their political beliefs so i think it's really funny that jerry from the 500e board came in and said here's about the furthest thing one can imagine from being a liberal so you know it's funny because i don't I didn't realize that people know this about me, but Jerry, Jerry himself is a pretty amazing guy. He put together an entire forum dedicated to the 500E, which is in some ways, like because he basically runs this forum in some ways, he's probably getting more useful information into one place than I am. And the fact that he has the patience to actually watch and monitor a forum all day means that he has to see a lot of what people are discussing about cars for sale on the internet. So you know, this is really, uh, really interesting because the person who made the initial comment said that he read an article of mine in sports car market, you know, and <laughs> I think he came, came from that position. But, you know, the way that I have to write as a professional has to keep people guessing about what I actually think about certain things or just keep them quiet because I, I don't think we live in a political climate in the United States where it's safe for us to talk about our beliefs at all. You know, if I actually, if I actually talked about some of the things that I've heard and seen and thought about, you know, it would probably upset people in maybe one camp or the other. And, um, anyway, I think it's interesting though, because Jerry left probably what was the nicest comment on here. And I have to say this because people don't usually leave comments that are this nice about other people on YouTube. They'll just be like, you're wrong, bro. You don't know anything. But Jerry said, Jerry referred to me in almost a familial sense, calling me Cousin Pierre. And he said, Cousin Pierre is all about family, living a good, honest life, and being a wholesome fellow. And you can look at his early video, earlier videos and see his hair is a bit shorter. I just think he's too busy working 18 hours a day, you know, and um, he said, I look on this as a badge of honor that he actually works in customer cars. Unlike most shop owners, you can't turn a wrench themselves because of here is the real deal. So, uh, you know, I think it's great that, that people still view me as part of the Mercedes family. You know, it's, it's a hard, hard thing to run a shop and connect with people who own these cars on a personal level. And recently, you know, Jerry, Jerry's a pretty intuitive guy because he doesn't actually know what's going on. But when he says that I'm all about family, he's absolutely right. Because right now I have, I have out of work circumstances with, within my family that are demanding that I work in a regular schedule. And people that cut hair are typically at work between 10 and 7. And I'm typically at work between 6.30 and 9. So that may make things a little difficult. <laughs> and then Mark at least admits that he jumped the gun on looks and he lives in a college town and there are a lot of beards there. Well, 
Thanks, Mark, for saying you jumped the gun. Because just because I look a certain way doesn't mean that, you know... I always sum it up like this. I enjoy my long hair because when you go play soccer and you have long hair, people think you're better. Now let's get into some of the more serious comments. Um, people, so Howard Silver says... You have seven days to ask all the questions you want, request more photos, request video, FaceTime, or go inspect the car. Also, who you buy from matters. Are you buying from someone who has a good rep and bring a trailer? Or are you buying from someone with no rep? You make a ton of generalizations in this video which are not supported in anything besides your own opinion. That's fine, but that's not a true representation of a legitimate sample size or a legitimate statistical analysis of the sample cars. So Howard is right. He, he is right about asking all the questions you want and requesting more photos and requesting video. But the thing about photos and video and FaceTime is that people can edit videos and photos. And FaceTime is really not a great way to analyze anything. It's blurry. It goes way too fast. You can't focus in on things. For example, when I'm looking for a video of a car... I would want to have a 30-minute video of that car driving in all sorts of conditions to be able to analyze how good it is. And when I'm doing diagnostic work, I don't even use FaceTime. I ask for still photos because I can get more information out of a photo than I can a video. Now, Howard is additionally right when he says who you buy for matters. There are a lot of great sellers on Bring a Trailer who sell great cars, you know. Not... All old cars are perfect, but some people get pretty close. You know, I've never had somebody buy a car from somebody like Dean Lumbach and say, I bought a car that has a bunch of issues. Everybody who, have, who I've talked to that's bought a car from him has been happy with their purchase. And these are not small purchases. The problem becomes when you're buying from somebody who has either no reputation or a carefully masked reputation where Bring a Trailer says, well, they've had a few duds come through here. Maybe we should flag those comments or whatever. Now, making a ton of general generalizations is where I have a dispute with Howard's particular comment. I'm not making generalizations. I'm making observations based on cars that were sold on Bring a Trailer and have come through my shop. And I've seen this enough times to where I feel that this is a serious problem. I'm also making comments not just about cars that were sold on Bring a Trailer, but cars that were offered on Bring a Trailer, bid to a fair market value and not sold because they had serious issues that were not adequately discussed. Some of these cars have still ended up in my care and my possession. Now, the other thing that I want you guys to understand is I'm not saying that these are inherently bad cars or unfixable cars. It's just that they required a lot more time and effort and money to become good cars. And when you're buying the car for an above market price and it has issues that are not disclosed, that's not a fair deal for the buyer. It just isn't. Now let's see what else he says. So really I think the problem is Howard think, thinks that this is an opinion. This isn't really an opinion. When I'm finding consistent mechanical needs that require 10, 15, 20, 25, $30,000 worth of work on cars that were disclosed as not having these needs or these questions were almost brushed off as you know, people saying the car is fully sorted or the car doesn't have any significant mechanical needs. That's not really an opinion. What I'm doing is I'm debunking the opinion of the person who was selling the car, which is a dishonest opinion. Remember, I have no skin in the game here because I don't watch Bring a Trailer or sell on Bring a Trailer. Now, you might say that I have skin in the game because I run a Mercedes repair shop, but here's how I'm going to debunk that argument. I don't need extra work. <laughs> I have too much extra work to do right now. Like I could sit down and look at my schedule for the next six months and schedule 80 hours a week of work and it still wouldn't be done. And I don't need bring a trailer cars to fill up that space. So I want less work to do. I want to be able to get off work early and play with my daughter and hang out with my wife. I want to be able to come to work at a normal time after making breakfast for my family. I don't want to be at work fixing bring a trailer cars. The money doesn't mean anything to me. Yes, there is a number that I need to charge per hour to make the shop run. And yes, there is a standard that I need to repair vehicles to, which exceeds the standards of most other repair shops. But it doesn't mean that I want rows of bring a trailer cars coming in here so I can dash a person's hopes and dreams by telling them they bought a bad car. So... 
as far as a statistical analysis goes, the statistics are that we've based this data on 10 vehicles that have had an average estimate price of about $17,500. All of these vehicles sold for about 25% more than they should have sold for. So there are the statistics. So Tony, let's see here, Tony, live TV. Well, Tony, he said, Tony says, I agree with you, videos like this are irresponsible. To call Bat as being dishonest is totally wrong and irresponsible. Uh, I think it's dishonest because people are buying cars and not getting what they're paying for. So that's dishonest. Some of these vehicles have over 300 pictures. I can take 300 photos of the best parts of myself and never show you my hairy upper back. That's all I'm saying. If somebody says I want to see a picture of Pierre's upper back, I can Photoshop it to make it look, you know, like a more Nordic upper back with less hair, maybe a soft red. My point is, you could take 300 pictures of anything and leave out the crucial details, which is something that I think I've seen on every single one of these cars that's come through my shop. What else can you photograph? Well, you can photograph the car's temperature gauge after you've driven it for 45 minutes. You can photograph the oil pressure gauge when the oil pressure is low. Or you can photograph things like on every single R107, the steering coupling, which is hard to get to. Or the flex discs, which might be cracking. Or the subframe mounts while they're suspended with the car in the air. I'm just saying, I'm usually able to tell the story of the car's needs in five photographs instead of, instead of having to convince a potential buyer in 300, photo, 300 photographs that there's nothing to worry about while conveniently leaving out the photos that actually matter. That's why when I ping my customers and ask them for specific photos of things, I say I need clear photographs of these three or four items. It's sort of like when you go to the doctor and you have a brain tumor, they don't take 600 MRIs of the brain tumor. A good doctor needs like three or four MRIs to diagnose a brain tumor. But if the person who's doing the MRI does it wrong, it doesn't matter if they take 300 of them. Nobody's going to see it. Now, Howard is right, and he's saying these are old cars, and if you buy one, you're going to need to do your own inspection. You, I agree, but then he says, if Pierre's customers are purchasing these cars and going to Pierre to look at them, it's really dumb, and they deserve what they got. What they got. This is just my opinion, not hearsay. Okay, so Tony is right, but Tony, I want you to understand something. These people were not my customers when they bought the car. They contacted me for the first time after purchasing the car. It doesn't mean that I think that they're dumb or stupid either. Okay, like saying you're dumb and you get what you deserve if you're uninformed is literally like taking out a bunch of student loan debt and being told that this government's going to pay it off and then they don't pay it off. You know, you were told by an authority that everything was fine and because you're not knowledgeable about the legal process involved in paying off a student loan, you trusted the legal authority on it. Now, a lot of these people trusted the sellers and sometimes it's difficult to go inspect a car because when you're paying 30 or 40 or $20,000 for a car, chances are you don't have a lot of free time. Chances are you're a, you're a successful person, you have a business to run, you have affairs to attend to, you may have stuff going on within your family or at home that requires your time, you know, and you may just say, look, it is worth the risk. And there are times when that sort of thing is worth the risk. However, I will agree with you that it is better and smarter to inspect the car beforehand. Regardless, if you bought a car and bring a trailer, I'm not going to sit there and point my finger at you and say you made a bad decision. We just have to do to the car what it needs. You know, that's life. Um, now, Joe Valdora, who's a really nice guy, I appreciate you, Joe, a lot. Um, he said, if you watch the video carefully and listen, which a lot of YouTube people don't, people reports having fixed cars that were run through BAT and needed serious repairs. That's a factual observation by an expert who actually did the work. I think that's the position I'm held to. I'm supposed to be an expert. I profess proficiency with classic Mercedes, so my expertise is supposed to matter. I'm not saying that I think I'm better or smarter than everybody. I just do this 80 hours a week, you know? If you want to buy from BAT, BAT please feel free, but I wouldn't recommend anything buying from an outfit that, pl an outfit that plainly doesn't care about what they're selling in the least. And I think that that is a problem with bringing a trailer. There's some apathy as to whether or not they're selling decent cars. 
So Tony Howard asks, what is BAT doing that's dishonest? Nothing. Know what you're buying. Do your own DD. Due diligence. BAT is just the conduit. No different than any other auction house. It's reckless to call them dishonest. But when you post comments that the sellers make about the cars and represent them on your website without vetting them, that's dishonest. How much work do you have to do to make sure you're being honest? Does that involve sending a guy to inspect the car? It might, even if the car is in Alaska. If you're wondering, don't take it. But the other thing is BAT actually rejects a large number of good cars. They use some criteria like Carfax reports, but at the end of the day, they don't really know the difference. There's no way to determine a car is good from an office or not. So BAT needs to make a more clear disclaimer posted with every auction saying what you see is what you get. All right, so, um, and Howard says the sample size he sees is tiny. He doesn't consider what was paid or what was disclosed or shown in pictures. BAT is conduit. He's right, they are conduit. Um, but to say that they're factually dishonest is totally wrong. Well, we don't, we don't know if they're being dishonest or not, but I would say that if you're allowing dishonest sellers to engage your platform and use it to sell cars, you're also being dishonest too. So all I'm going to say is this, BAT, you need to clean up your process of vetting cars because you are misleading people based on your ads to think they're getting better cars than they're actually getting. I don't think that that is honest. I'm not saying that my opinion is the most important opinion in the world, but this is my opinion based on a sample size I've observed. And people from Bring a Trailer don't want to talk to or engage with or discuss their work with the mainstream collector car community at large, which I find not reassuring. You know, now if you look at the guys from MB Market, which I think try to do a better job of this, uh, you will find that they engage more with the Mercedes community in a whole, like they're actually making an effort to do this. With Bring a Trailer, maybe it's passive dishonesty where they've gotten so big they can't vet everything, or they've let their greed for getting the highest sales take the place of them actually providing grounded information and warnings and proper proper notification of the need to do due diligence with every auction. That's all I'm saying. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you have anything mean to say, leave it in the comments so I can comment on it next time. Thank you guys so much and enjoy owning the car you already own. And if you bought a car and bring a trailer, that's okay. Doesn't mean it's a bad car. It may just mean there are some surprises. See you guys in the future.